you know, we're all excited about the NHL season. We're all excited about the Canucks and everything that they've done right? and, and the additions. But when they gave up on Ole Ulevi yesterday... Yeah, the subtractions um, are a little bit of a head scratcher um, because there have been, like, we've been following this team for years. There have been years of giving players less deserving chance after chance after chance after chance. (laughs) And um, here's a player who seemingly was not given that chance to really prove himself in the NHL. He comes, you know, you give him 22, you give him 23 NHL games and we watched a lot of those NHL games and it was, can I, can I just add something? Yeah. Um, and we had been fed over the course of the many years that, um, since he was lost, since he was drafted that NHL defensemen take a very long time to develop. Mm -hmm. They take 300 games or whatever. So why? Yeah, it leaves you with that question of why and and for what? Because my text to Ryan yesterday was like, are these guys going to play? <laughs> they might. They're basically trading mm-hmm. no, for Noah Juleson to see what he's got and if he can develop because, the, you know, they're giving Noah Juleson the Ole Ua Levy treatment, but because mm-hmm. he wasn't laying down on the ice for a bag skate, he's going to have that much more of a or leash and that much more leeway with the coaching, but it's, it's exactly that you, we spend here, you know, the all sides of the fan base spent so long, just, you know, justifying this draft pick and keeping him around. And Hey, Eric Carlson took how many years to become a good defenseman, a serviceable defenseman, like 45 minutes, happen. huh? 45, 45 <laughs> minutes. He literally arrived in Ottawa got a got a whopper at burger king and then he was like yeah i'm just gonna win north. i'm just gonna be a norris candidate now and you know it's the some dead weight comes off the back end this is this is only you love you's one shot to maybe get a pretty consistent time in this you know in a roster spot mm-hmm. he's he lays on the ice after a bag skate might have thrown up and now he he's shipped for literal spare parts to the florida panthers and- i i i have like very recent recollection of lots of players coming to training camp n- and not being in shape I, <laughs> and yet and yet no. given nhl playing minutes i th- i think in in terms of what happened with Oli, it's uh, it's kind of a layered thing where first they they drafted for need which did not go the way that they wanted it to um they're there came a point where they just knew they, they saw the he's 23 and they saw kind of the product on the ice. Mm-hmm. He can't pivot. Mm-hmm. Okay. His injury, he has some injuries and just, he cannot pivot as a defenseman and keep up. Like when Milan Lucic, this happened when Milan Lucic is turnstiling you, that should be, and, and you're not like a brooding defenseman. You're supposed to be a mobile agile 23 year old finish for you know chris first pass you know two a guy um that that's you know that that shows you a lot and i can understand people's frustrations because they look at it as an asset management thing and they're really upset because oh kachuk was taken Mm -hmm. matthew kachuk was taken right after i totally get that um Mm -hmm. i also want to just quickly just say that you know this stuff goes both ways like Mm -hmm. okay so calgary drafts Matthew Kachuk right after Vancouver takes Ole U Levy. Second round in that same 2016 draft, Calgary takes Mason McDonald, goaltender. <laughs> Who do the Vancouver Canucks take directly after him? Thatcher Demko. Yeah. And there is a bit of a no man's land in the middle of that, those top 10 picks. Yep. And, you know, it no was matter the, how... sorry, it was the wrong, it was the wrong pick. It was yeah. the wrong pick when it was made. Everyone knew. You when they said from the London Knights and you didn't hear Matthew Kachuk, like everyone knew. And redacted was also, you know, you could say the same thing with redacted in 20, what, 2014. Yeah. Picked. Um, yeah. But, you know, and then there's, I forget who posted, I might have been Sam from the broadcast, who there was a quote with, with Matthew Kachuk in the province mm-hmm. where he's like, in, at the draft combine, the Vancouver Canucks. They interviewed him. They didn't seem very interested. 
And it's like they went into the combine being like Ole Ulevi is, or you know, at least Ole Ulevi we're interested in, maybe Pierre Luc Dubois, but Matt Kachuk is just that that was uh that was old news to them. They weren't interested. Right. And it's just it's tough to see. And it's tough to see them basically. You know, it's another Jimbo reclamation project. It isn't as uh, polarizing as previous ones with your, you know, your Jared McCann's or your, you know, your Sven Berchi to Calgary for a second. But it's like you gave up on a guy that you didn't really give a chance to a guy that Travis Green did not really care for at all and didn't want to give an opportunity to. And if you made one mistake, your staple to the bench. And that, I mean, you can't have a, def- a, a defenseman that young playing six minutes a night. So that's, it makes well, sense. Oh. Okay. Sorry. Well, yeah, I, I, I hear you, but like, we're like, let's be honest here. And this is n- no, no, th- no shade on all of you Levy. Cause he's made it farther than, you know, 99.9% of, of hockey players in this world. But what we saw as a 23 year old defenseman who has inc- like incredible mobility issues and particularly is stuck behind two player two players on the left side that do are are playing his role at a higher level in Quinn Hughes and Jack Rathbone in terms of being a, a, a crisp first pass defenseman um, maybe he's not the, you know, he's not an offensive driving type player, but you know, if, I don't know, uh, you, you just look at kind of the breadth of, uh, Finnish defensemen whom are two way, you know, they keep over the play. They, did where, even if he was going to pan out, even if they had the time and the spots for him to hopefully watch him develop, he was never going to make it past Quinn Hughes and Jack Rathbone, even if he reached the peak of what we we his highest ceiling he was never going to reach that so what they did is they saw this asset saying okay we're we can waive this asset and someone can claim him or he can kind of rot in utica and then we can bring him up to be a number six guy and then what good is that going to do yeah or you flip him to florida you get a a fourth line center whom you know character wise Thomas Trance talked about it. He's, he's an, he's an awesome guy from the floor. Very nice on the phone. (laughs) Very nice on the phone. He can penalty kill, which God, they need help on special teams and Noah Juleson whom. Okay. So they got a right-handed defenseman. He's 24 years old. He's had injury issues in terms of um, issues with his, his sight. And he's been stuck in this weird spot where, He's not cracking an NHL lineup, but he's also not being sent down to develop and kind of learn, relearn Mm -hmm. how to play defense in the Mm -hmm. AHL in terms of his new, his new body, his new Mm -hmm. tools. Um, But before that, you know, he was, he was a, he he was a, 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 one of a, of a strong prospect piece in a Montreal organization. You know, he was, he was at times given top four minutes. Mm -hmm. Um, So you look at these two players they got from Florida, they they don't have to put them on waivers. They're waiver exempt for a month because they've already cleared, uh, which gives the Canucks a bit more flexibility. He's from Abbotsford. Like, Hey, you know, Carl Blecker, Carl new Patreon backer, Carl Blecker told me that, uh, you know, that him and Noah would go to the same spin class. You well, know, that's he's, good. He's a Fraser. He 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 <laughs> he takes his fitness seriously. Um, Can so, we get Noah Jules on the podcast? Oh, uh, we'll see. I'll I'll message Carl and be like, "Hey, Carl, listen, I need a listen, favor. Listen, for you, listen pal. pal, I need a favor." <laughs> um, now, so, Rash, and I'm really on a positive note. Really excited about it. Yeah. On a positive note, because you know uh, there used to be a, a a a consumption of alcohol to celebrate somebody else's former goal of uh, somebody's goal. Of course, that's on the PNO, uh, PON band list. Arash proposed that now instead of shotgunning, you take your jewel, your vaporizer, and you jewel for Jewelson whenever he scores. <laughs> yeah. And then that, you just, that, that, you know, okay. you, you, you tick tock the biggest bubbles. You no, know, my, biggest my, clouds. My, I wanted to tweet this, but then everyone started making jewel jokes. I'm like, ah, God damn it. You were the was, first. You were the first. No, it was, it was, it was just like, uh yeah instead of shotgun redacted it's um yeah jewel for Juleson, where like tom tommy the tractor guy for example instead of like eating terrible food he has to hit like a mango jewel 
until he passes out on camera. <laughs> Like, how funny would that be? <laughs> just, it's a little concerning. I, I mean, the Canucks might be held responsible for listen, that. Listen, listen. I'm not, I'm just saying, no, Juleson is not a prolific goal scorer. <laughs> he might, you know, I'm just, but I'm saying if the time comes, can you imagine, like, just like if no, Juleson scores a goal in Rogers Arena, they just have the smoke machine going everywhere. No, no. Here's what happens. Rogers Arena, no, Juleson scores. And that one guy is like, they can't kick all of us out. <laughs> <laughs> they can't kick all of us out they only have a certain amount of security all um, right, you guys. <laughs> come on oh no are we are we suggesting this ryan are we gonna are we gonna give birth to this idea yeah we um on a very excited uh exciting heartfelt note uh, a warm fuzzy note arash and i are going to see his philadelphia flyers on thursday october 28th yes. in our matching uh black skate jerseys with our respective uh <laughs> RFA re-signings and just the idea of that being a thing and having a couple of sneaky ones on the way, you know, taking some transit downtown and getting a little silly on an, on an <laughs> evening in Rogers arena. A I'm sauced. very excited for it. We are not, we are not Canucks fans. We are hockey fans and we are here to, we are here to get loaded as the young kids. <laughs> My other thing I wanted to say was, on the subject of prolific goal scoring defensemen from uh, the WHL that at one time or another have played for the Canucks um, at the team. I went to the team store on Friday and I, bought- Oh yeah, this is great. I on bought- your anniversary. Was it no less? Yeah. My anniversary gift to myself was buying a uh, Derek Pouliot game used stick. And um, I'm going to use it for beer league and drop in. Cause it was a $300 stick for $75. Um, but anybody I tell this to, it's just like, well, Derek, Derek, Derek Puglia, like, are you gonna, you just gonna use that thing to throw some outlet passes up the middle or give it away or d- dump and change? Like, nobody seems to uh, be impressed about the bargain I got. Well, you got a damn good bargain. It's just, wait, does it say Puglia on it? Oh, yeah. Let's I, see. I asked if it was autographed. <laughs> yeah, where, where does it say? Oh, it absolutely does say Puglia on it. Shit. <laughs> well, so bud. You- yeah. So anyway, if you see me in a drop-in game somewhere, don't slash my stick because it cost me seventy-five dollars, and it's my favorite port- former Portland Winter Hawk, uh, Derek Pouliot, who so played with Ra- Nick Patan. What Ryan is telling you: uh, next time you see Ryan in drop-in, take some liberties, guys. <laughs> He's rich. He the the pay the pucks on net Patreon has been proliferated by Ryan Shep for too long. <laughs> And he must learn the value of money. Wait, wait, wait. Is that expensive or cheap? Because I didn't react to it in, in either way. I'm like, I guess so. Um, originally, this, this, so like the stick, this quality of stick would cost like 300 bucks if you went to okay. sport check. Yeah. They sell it for 150 uh-huh. And then I was like, hmm. Right. $75. Hell, that's a that's bargain 50%. and a half. I would um, think so if it's regular price, $300. I'm it just money. has a name on it. You could put Shap over top of it on tape. <laughs> Derek Pouliot, we know you're listening. <laughs> it's nothing personal. It's not nothing personal, pal. It's just you, you saw a sale. You had to go. It's for just it. middle class business, baby. <laughs> <laughs> nothing personal. Uh, uh, another fun little talking point about this, uh, because the only team the Vancouver Canucks trade with is the Florida Panthers, um, by acquiring uh, Yuho. Uh, Lamico. I hope I'm not. I'm hoping I'm not mispronouncing Lamico, that. Is there is a lack of hundred percent? You probably are. Yeah, I probably am. That's I apologize. He was a third rounder by the cat uh, by the Panthers in 2014. He only had five assists last Lamico, year. Yeah. He's going to be their 13th forward if he sticks up here. Um, nothing, Nuts nope. could have had him in the first. <laughs> <laughs> they just need it. Listen, they just needed a fourth line center just to yeah. until Sutter comes back to play yeah. the penalty kill. I'm like, you levy man. Best of luck to him, but Jim, I, I think Jim saw him at the World Juniors, fell in love, mm. and couldn't, you know, see anything else aside from that. You know, it, it, it's it's tough and it's it sucks. But yeah. also, you know, they didn't. They could have went and picked, you know, Gabriel Velarde over, you know, Elias Patterson, and um, Quinn Hughes fell to them, and hope, you know, thank thank God they they didn't overthink that pick and. Um, every, every franchise is going to have picks like this. It's just frustrating that like Matt Kachuk was right there. And it's frustrating that Nick Ehlers and Willie Nylander are just sitting there and 
you overthink it and you try to make this like mm-hmm. big boss brain play. It's like, man, just BPA, pick the best player available. And then even if that player isn't of the position that you need it, develop that player and then trade that player later on for not only the thing that you need, but possibly more assets. Um, Christian. Yes. And then we can wrap up this segment on Yelevy, but would he have been drafted in the first round otherwise? Do you think? Yes. Oh yeah. Okay. Oh yeah. Okay. Absolutely. 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 It's just he, the, uh, um, he probably jumped I mean, up about four or five spots. I want to okay. say. And yeah. so there was still a possibility he would have been a, in the top 10. Yeah. It's, yeah. For he's, sure. Okay. He's like redacted the previous year mm-hmm. where it's like, mm-hmm. This person, this athlete has everything that you're looking for. And if they can put it all together and have that hockey, that NHL X factor, it will be great. Right. But with okay. those two first picks, mm-hmm. which well, is not very positive on, on Jimbo's scouting and drafting record, they just didn't have that. Let's, yeah. let's just quickly for a second, like I, I cause I think people are, 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 they, they're quick to forget the 2016 draft. So that's the Austin, Ma- Austin Matthews draft, right? So the two, the two, the top two picks are pretty much a slam dunk. So it's Austin Matthews, Patrick Line. They're supposed to go one, two. The right. third pick in that draft is supposed to be Jesse Pulley He's supposed to go to Columbus. But then Columbus goes and drafts one slot ahead and picks Dubois. Dubois was on the Canucks radar. They mm-hmm. wanted, you know, that's that's they wanted that kind of one-two mm-hmm. punch down the middle with Horvat or maybe transfer him to be aware. So he go, Dubois goes to Columbus. Now Edmonton is kind of left holding the bag and they're like, okay, well they take the BPA, Jesse Pugliari. And then right. number five. So now, um, you know, you especially look at this draft where, you know, they, they pick you Levy over Kachuk and the second defenseman that goes to number nine to Montreal is Mikhail Sergeyev. Mm-hmm. So again, they, they, that draft kind of, you know, they, they probably had Dubois number one, and then they had, you know, you levy number two and then whatever, whatever. And then they had an idea of like, Oh, what if Yessi pull, falls to us? We didn't think mm-hmm. this. And then Yessi goes to Edmonton and they're like, Oh, well, we, who's the guy next guy on our list. And it's you levy. And, uh, you know, you know, what? I, you know, just, I'm yeah, not, it's not just frustrating. Be... It's just frustrating with Sergey. Yeah. Sergey is sitting there, Keller, Kachuk. Not yeah. to be the cynic, but I really think that in their short-sighted nature, they looked at, why would we draft Matthew Kachuk? We just drafted Redacted last year. He's going to turn into him. He's yeah. going to be, he's going to turn into the power forward better. Mm-hmm. And it's that you draft, you draft the best player available. I don't care if you have seven Matthew Kachuks at home. If the best player, av- player available is Nate Matthew Kachuk, just yeah. like Rash said, you draft yeah. that and then you oh, man, trade that- and develop. Sorry, I'm looking at the 2016 draft and I'm like, oh, it gets worse than mm-hmm. that. <laughs> yeah. It's like, it's like, okay, so of the defense unless the Sergachev goes nine to Montreal. Mm-hmm. And then like Jake Bean to Carolina. Okay. But then Charlie McAvoy. Mm-hmm. And then Jacob Ch- uh, Chitrin to Arizona. Now, wait, is this the... Arash, we're trying to put smiles on people's faces and Guys, we're going to draft okay. history. Hockey no Juleson. Uh, jewel for Jewel. <laughs> Come on. <laughs> let's see. Look, ladies and gentlemen, let's see those clouds. <laughs> Vic Nish. Um, <laughs> that, got, that boomed Ryan. He wasn't expecting that. Uh, my, one, my one little fun fact is that there's, this is the 23rd straight season that a Florida Panther draft pick has played on the Vancouver Canucks or been on the Canucks roster. How Is long the- have you been holding? Did you, where did you find that stat? I was on the internet. I, I stole it. In fact, you're kidding me. Yeah. It's 23 straight years. Um, I believe it. Dude, that's so sick. So what year is that? 98. Yeah. So like oh, Jovo, since like the, yeah, Jovo yeah, the started with Jovo? train, man, I got to look into that. We'll do that. I'll do that research. Uh, for uh for a second an upcoming another segment but that's one hell of a segment <laughs> that's a hell of a journey uh no